Hey what's up guys Tanmay here for Simple Snippets and I'm back with another video for C++ programming and control structures. So today we are going to be discussing about a new control structure that is the switch case control structure. In the previous video tutorial we saw the if else control structure so if you have missed that video you can check it out. Also if you don't know what control structures are we have a theoretical video on this topic so you can check it in this playlist itself. So with that being said let's start with today's tutorial that is the switch case control structure. Okay, so the best way to understand this control structure is to actually take up a programming example. So as you can see on the screen, I have opened up my Dave C++ ID and I have created a file and I have also typed in the basic structure of a C++ program. Now on the top two lines, you can see that it is a block comment wherein I have written the question. So the question is as follows, write a program to take up input from user, which is from number one to seven and print the corresponding weekday. That is, if the user enters 1, it corresponds to Monday, if he enters 2, it's Tuesday and so on. So you must be thinking you can use if else as well in this case. But if we use if else, we'll have 7 different conditions and we'll have to type in 7 different else if conditions. So instead of that, we can use switch case. So when to use a switch case and when to use a if else condition. So the basic distinguish between these two control structures is that in if else statements, we can compare different ranges. So by ranges I mean I can say if x greater than 50 or I can say if x less than 50 and x greater than 10. So in this case I am checking the range. So any number between less than 50 is qualified for this condition first one which I have written over here and any number which is less than 50 but greater than 10 falls under this condition. So here I can use if else but in switch case we cannot check for ranges. So we need a, we cut that part. So we need to have a distinct value and in switch case it only operates on integer type. So we cannot also have multiple conditions. So here we have two conditions here. But in switch case we cannot have that. So the only place where switch case actually is beneficial is when we have many distinct conditions. So this question is exactly suitable for such kind of condition. That is we have seven different distinct conditions wherein the user will enter the number one to seven and each condition is going to correspond to a different output. So let's go ahead and start with the syntax of this switch case. So first let me create a variable. So I'll write int num. Now I'll ask the user to enter a num. That is to enter a number. And the number should be in between 1 and 7. So this statement will print enter a number between 1 and 7. Now I need to take input from user. So I write C in and the variable name num. So whatever the user enters as number will be taken in as input and it will be assigned to the variable num. So now we can check this number for different cases. So here is the syntax of switch case. You have to write switch and in bracket we have to pass in the variable that is in this case it is num. Now open and close curly braces. So the first case would be when user enters the number 1. So you type in case then the actual value that is the constant value 1 and then give a colon. Press enter and on the next line you actually type in what you want to do when the number is 1. So I want to print Monday if the number is 1 then give a semicolon. And then type in a keyword as break. I'll explain what break does in a while. So similarly, there are more six cases, right? So let me just copy paste them. Okay, so I have typed in all the seven different cases which can occur. But then what if the user types something else? That is, it does not enter a number between 1 to 7, but a random number, which is basically a mistake. So in order to deal with such mistakes or some errors, 
you have to add one more case which is the default case so i'll type in default again write colon and inside that i print invalid input so this default case is not compulsory that is it is an optional condition but you can write it so that it deals with errors or invalid input okay so that is it i guess i have completed the switch case so let's go ahead and actually compile this code i'll save it first then i'll just compile it and you can see it's processing the c++ source file and it has zero errors and zero warnings so let me just go ahead and run this code okay so i got a message that enter a number between 1 and 7 so let me just type in 1 and press enter so as i press enter i get the output as monday so what happened here is when i pressed 1 it went to the switch case and the variable num is holding the value 1 so it went to the first case and this case is when the variable num is holding the value 1 so that is why it is case and the constant number one so it printed out monday and it escaped this all these cases because of this break statement so it directly came out of the switch case over here so this is the end of switch case so that is the reason why we write this break statement if i wouldn't have written this break statement the output wouldn't have changed but then the program would have flown through all these statements as well which was not necessary because we got our output in the first case itself so let me just run again and let's type in some other number this time i enter the number 2 so the output should be tuesday and there you go with the answer so let's try a number which is not between 1 and 7 so i enter 10 so as you can see i got a output as invalid input that means this default part got executed so that is the reason why we type in a default statement or default condition as well so if the user types in something wrong he can get the corresponding output so this is the basic working of a switch case i hope you understood the program that's it for this video if you like this video give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you get notified when you upload the next video peace